Hey, it's, it's incredible to, to see you live. I always hear the podcast and your voice. So I'm curious about um, how your perspective on Indie Hacker changed after you got acquired by Thrive. I mean, you were telling all this, this story mm -hmm. that, you know, you want to build a business, be independent, be a, be a founder, have no cap in your, in your salary. And now you're back to employee. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did that <laughs> Are you still excited or do you want to move or run away at some point to something else? It's funny because it actually made me much more ambitious than I ever was, which is ironic. You would think that like not being an employee would have made me the most ambitious and being an employee would have shrunk, you know, um, constrained the scope of my vision, but the exact opposite happened. Um, and I, I'll get into some of the details. So when I started Indie Hackers, I had spent six, seven years in Silicon Valley. You know, I'd gone through YC. All my friends were basically YC founders or high growth tech startup <laughs> founders and like Everything is like, go for a billion, change the world. You can do it. There's very little respect for like, take a small first step and see where you get. Uh, and after going that route, like I was inspired and I really respect a lot of people who are doing that. But at the same time, like, I was just tired of trying to do that myself. I thought, you know, I could be doing this until I'm 40 and just genuinely never succeed. And then like, I would be embarrassed and I feel bad about myself. And like, I just don't want to get there. So you know what? I just need like a quick win. I need something that can like pay my rent, just like pay my rent, pay my cell phone bill. Uh, let me afford health insurance, get me to the point where I'm just stable, and then I can figure out what I want to do next. And Indie Hackers was kind of, in a very meta way, uh, not only a project to help inspire others to do that, but also to like help me get there. And so about six, seven months after I started Indie Hackers, I had enough sponsorship revenue to actually do that. I was bringing in like six and a half, seven grand a month in sponsorship revenue, and it wasn't super hard to get there. It's like a few emails and phone calls, which were, uh, quite frankly, pretty pleasant. <laughs> Doing sales is much less scary than I thought it would be. And uh, then Patrick Collison from Stripe emailed me out of the blue. Like it wasn't even on my radar this could happen. They were actually at the very top of my, my sponsors list, like dream sponsor. I was going to reach out to them last after I like perfected my pitch to everybody else. But he emailed me first and was like, hey, can we buy Indie Hackers? And we got brunch and felt each other out a little bit. And I was like, yeah, this guy's smart and on the up and up. And I guess he thought the same about me. And so, you know, when we were talking, we were kind of talking about our vision for Indie Hackers. And I was a little embarrassed because I was like, my vision is to pay my rent. <laughs> <laughs> With Stripe, it's like, we're trying to, you know, raise the GDP of the internet and change yeah. it. <laughs> know it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's my, my step too. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think he really challenged me to, to see some of the value inherent in indie hackers that like, I was ambiently aware of. But when you're in the trenches and you're just like, you know, an operator every day, like writing code, making sales calls, like it's easy to get lose track of kind of the bigger vision. And I think it helped me develop a bigger vision, which I had already had, like I was already saying on my podcast and writing in my post, but I just hadn't really concretized it yet, which is like, I just want to inspire more people to do this thing. I think the world is changing and more people can do it. And it's easier than ever and more lucrative than ever and more fulfilling than ever. And uh, if I can do that, like I'll be happy. And it's not even what I expected going into it. Like I just was totally 100% in it for myself uh, at the beginning. And so now it's like my ambitions are much grander than they've ever been. Uh, I'm much more plugged into like the actual impact that Indie Hackers has on people's lives. Like hearing a story of a stranger on the internet who sat down in you know, their basement and coded something up and now they're making $3 million a year and doing all sorts of stuff. And like, that's crazy inspiring. And people make actual life-changing decisions based on stories that they've heard on the Indie Hackers podcast or read on the forum, which blows my mind uh, to actually see people's like entire lives being changed. So uh, ironically, yeah, as an employee, I have a much grander scope in my vision. Uh, I can't get into the details of how I'm compensated at Stripe, but it's almost like I'm running a high growth startup and Stripe is an investor in it. And so I don't feel like awesome. an employee. And okay. I, I have this all, whole other theory about how pretty much every employee is a business anyway. Like if, you, if you're getting paid by somebody to do something, then like your business and you're selling them a product or a service. Mm -hmm. And if you're an employee, you're just selling the service of like your time and your skills to just one customer who's your employer. And Besides that, everything else is the exact same as any other business. Like you can negotiate with your employer to raise your prices if you want, just like a business owner can raise their prices and you can potentially find other customers and you can, you know, walk away and fire your customers if you don't like them. And so I think it's not so, it's not like so bad being an employee, like I don't have anything wrong with it. I just think that you should, you know, if you're going to go that route, you should look at yourself as a business and you should really try to understand the value that you provide to your customer slash employer. And you should really be willing to negotiate and willing to differentiate, differentiate yourself from like the rest of the competition, which is basically everybody else with their job title, so that you're uniquely valuable <laughs> and it's hard for your customers to like not, you know, 
uh, basically pay for what you're providing. And I think there's lots of people like that and lots of companies whose job titles like you might not have heard of and there's not like open positions on job sites for them, but like they're making usually a lot more money and they're a lot more plugged into the value that they're delivering and they feel like they have a lot more control over their lives. So it's not so bad to be an employee, but like I don't, I don't think one should have an employee mindset once you understand the kind of business founder mindset. 